very good evening we are transmitting live from a very pleasant evening on the palm jumeirah we are looking at telescopic views of uh, the full moon technically known as uh, the perigee full moon okay? also known very famously very commonly as uh, the super moon the term becoming famous for the past uh, few years so uh, what what is so special about uh, the full moon today uh, the moon happens to be very close to the earth today it hasn't been this close for the past 68 years um, as the moon goes around its orbit around the earth in an ellipse sometimes it's closer to the earth and sometimes it's much further away um, on occasions when it's close to the earth this it also happens to be a full moon night as uh, is today so we do get super moons quite often last october was a super moon uh, december is also going to be a super moon but this super moon is really special uh, the moon um, is really close to the earth it won't be this close to the earth until uh, 2034 so um, and this this really makes a difference when you look at the moon it may not be perhaps discernible to a casual observer but if you're a regular observer and you're looking at the moon you'll make out that it looks slightly bigger and slightly brighter how how bigger and how brighter compared with an average moon it's about 7 to 10% uh, brighter and compared with the smallest full moon it's about a full 30% uh, brighter uh well with it any uh, full moon okay, um it produces tides so the super moon produces super tides right um, um it it produces um uh it obviously causes sort of uh, the sun uh, the um, sea levels to rise uh, and and fall so there is uh, uh, high tide and uh, low tides uh, if the sun is aligned uh, with the moon then it causes even higher uh, uh, tides and even lower uh, tides as well apart from that obviously since it's much brighter it affects uh, the natural life cycle of uh, living beings on uh, the earth particularly nocturnal animals and uh, besides all that it it gives an excuse for amateur astronomers and casual stargazers alike to look at the moon and ad- admire its beauty uh, tell us why does the moon appear closer bigger towards the sky uh well it 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 actually is a bit of a paradox um when the moon is uh, near the horizon uh, it is actually further away from uh, the earth than it is when it is right at uh, overhead but uh it's an optical illusion uh since you're looking at um moon against sort of everyday objects trees buildings people it it tends to look slightly bigger and it it's this it looks and large it is exaggerated uh, um sort of um, uh, the whole uh, circumference looks a little bit exaggerated but it's an optical illusion uh, on the other hand when the moon is right uh, overhead it's actually closer to the earth uh, and it's actually 1% bigger in size but since you don't have anything to compare it against it actually looks well quite ordinary or even smaller than the one uh, on the horizon but but it it's nice it's a nice illusion to have makes for good photographic uh, opportunities so now um, we are looking at uh, the moon through a telescope okay, this is about uh, it's a small uh, refractor and we lo- we have magnified the moon about 50 times and um, if you look closely you can make out all uh, the craters of the moon the craters the sea uh one thing you notice is that you never see the other side of the moon the moon always faces towards the, the earth uh, showing its one particular side it, there is no dark side of the moon there's another side of the moon that you don't normally see but that's because the moon is locked in a tidal embrace with the earth okay? um so because of gravity the earth always uh, pulls moon in a tidal embrace and that's the reason you see only one face of the moon always pointing towards uh, the earth so uh, keep looking up and enjoy the super full moon
Well, um, photographing the moon is um, it's a little bit difficult and uh, it's a little bit of challenging than it looks like. Um, the moon, uh, when you look at the moon, um, you see it in against a dark night sky. And uh, if you want to photograph uh, the night sky, you people tend to sort of uh, use long exposures. But when you're photographing the moon, the moon actually is in full glare of the sun. So there is daylight on the moon when you're photographing it. Uh, and as such, the moon is quite bright. So if you're trying to photograph the moon using long exposures, well, uh, it's going to be overexposed. Now, this is a little bit counterintuitive. You're shooting at night. Uh, you could be shooting a night landscape. Typically, this calls for a longer exposure. But if you have a moon uh, as uh, one of the objects or your, your main uh, objects, uh, um, then it's better to keep uh, a much quicker uh, shutter speed. Now, this becomes a challenge if you really, if you want to have a good night landscape as well. Uh, I, I recommend if you want to shoot the full moon with a good landscape uh, properly exposed, don't shoot exactly on the day of the full moon. Shoot either a day before okay, or a couple of days before uh, the actual full moon, when typically when it's rising. Then you have the landscape properly sort of bathed in sunlight and you have this uh, moon also coming up with, uh, and you can uh, properly expose, you can properly expose both the moon and uh, the landscapes. And the use of iPhone in well, yeah, and people do have this misconception that you know astrophotography tends to be very hard. You require a big telescope to start with astrophotography, but now with the advent of these modern cameras, uh, you, your your uh, modern DSLRs, uh, even your uh, iPhones and your smartphones, uh, technology is uh, providing uh, these good image sensors in the hands of amateurs and even casual uh, stargazers. So um, you can, if, if, you, if you've been in a star party and you see uh, uh, views of um, bright objects, moons, planets, and you happen to have a smartphone with the permission of um, uh, um, the person showing you the uh, object, of course, you can try, try taking a snap. It's not as difficult as it looks. Uh, you can have um, quite good sort of uh, decent uh, uh, beginning to your astrophotography uh, hobby starting even with smartphones. As you sort of progress, then you know, people uh, tend to first uh, start with DSLRs, um, commercially available, very cheap, uh, uh, reasonably easy to use. You don't require any other equipment. You can shoot uh, bright objects, moon, planets, uh, sun, provided you have a telescope. And even wide field night landscapes, star trails, um, panoramic views of the Milky Way, star constellations. So uh, it's, it's really becoming, it's probably the best time to uh, start uh, astrophotography as your hobby. Okay. So um, thank you uh, and keep enjoying uh, the full moon. Bye.